In our last video, we learned how to set up and manage a SentMid mod website with Cloudflare. And in this video, I will teach you how to set up authenticated origin pulls and some more basic tips on managing your server. I want to stress again that I'm not an expert on any of these things. I have about a year of experience and I'm basically going to show you a bunch of tips and tricks and things that I've learned that I wish I knew from the beginning. The purpose of this video is to help beginners learn everything they need to know to get up and running on SentMid mod. In our previous video, we had set up our vhost using two different methods. We had done one using a self-signed cert and we were able to set Cloudflare to full. And then we also set it up using Let's Encrypt and you can also use full for that. Now we are using Let's Encrypt so we can actually activate strict mode now. You cannot do that if you have a self-signed cert. You can see the website still works fine. The next thing that we want to do is turn on authenticated origin pulls. Now we should be able to enable this right off the bat because the latest beta version of sentiment mod enables that by default and we'll show you how that works. Let's connect to our server. Let's run a CM, CM update to update sentmin. Once that's done, you always want to do a sentmin.sh. This is going to pull all the changes and activate all of them. If you want to stay up to date with all the sentmin mod information, sign up on the forum. And usually once a week for five minutes, I'll just check out the latest posts to see what's new and, and what's happening. I will say I have never had a single problem with any of these updates. Sentiment mod really has worked flawlessly for me. Any mistakes that have occurred are because of me. Once that's finished, we'll just let the yum updates get checked. Then let's change over to slash user slash local slash engine X. Let's go to conf dash conf dash dat t. Now we have two files here. We have the regular and the SSL version of our config file for our, ser our server. We're not even going to concern ourselves with the regular server because we're going to set ours up to only use SSL. Now to enable the origin certificate pull from Cloudflare, we just need to uncomment these two lines. You'll see this is what contains our normal SSL cert. This is for our authenticated origin pull. We're going to save this and then upload it to the server. Then we need to go to cron tab dash E. Let's look at our cron jobs and you'll see on the third line, this is a cron job that updates the origin certificate. Okay, this is all that's all automated now within the latest version of the beta of sentiment mod. You'll see the acme.sh cron job that's going to update our certificate whenever it's needed. So now we can control X to exit this and now we can do ngx restart to restart the nginx service. And now so now Cloudflare or origin pulls should be enabled. So anytime a request is made with the HTTP to your server, our server is going to ask the client for the certificate. The only person that's got the key for that certificate is Cloudflare. So only Cloudflare servers can now talk to our server over HTTP. So anyone who's trying to access our site by the IP address, it's not going to work. It has to go through Cloudflare. So now we should go to our site and refresh and it still works fine. So those are working. You may also want to consider not using Let's Encrypt for your certificate on your origin. You can create a certificate for free from Cloudflare and then upload this to your server and use that in place of your Let's Encrypt cert. Now the benefit to doing that is Let's Encrypt does log the IP address of who of the server that requested the cert. So in Let's Encrypt's logs, they know the IP address of your server. If they ever publish these records, which they may do, in fact, I believe that other certificate authorities do do this. Your origin IP can now be found by looking up those records. So alternatively, you can use this certificate and upload it to your server and switch to that. We're not going to do that, though, but we are going to go to into edge certificates. We want to always use HTTPS. So once we enable this, you will no longer be able to access the site over HTTP. We're going to enable automatic rewrites. Now, anything being served in from your domain is going to be automatically redirected to the HTTPS version. This is really helpful if your site, if you made your site years ago and you were not using SSL, now you don't have to go in and change all those links that you made. Those are going to automatically rewrite for you and they're going to do it on the CDN side. So it's not going to have any impact on your local server's performance. Again, you'll want to read the full guide on Sentiment Mod's website about setting it up with Cloudflare, there's one last thing we need to do, uh, and that's setting up this cron job. So we'll just copy this and we'll go into cron tab, paste that in, control X. Yes, we want to save it. And now that cron job will run. And if we look back at our config file here, you'll see these this include line for to include cl Cloudflare. Basically, that has the IP addresses. Basically, this has the Cloudflare IP addresses that you're going to whitelist. And so those are all in that file. I just catted it out. And then that cron tab job is going to update those and make sure it's up to date. So if Cloudflare adds any new IPs, ranges, 
then this will take care of that for you and you don't have to worry about it. Next, I'm going to show you how to update Engine X using SentMid Mod. And what we're going to do is we're going to enable zero downtime on the fly Engine X upgrade. Now, this is not enabled by default. You have to enable it yourself, like a lot of the non default functionality. These things are not things that have been tested on every server, so your mileage may vary. So to do that, we're just going to type in this command here. We're just going to echo uh, nginx0 odt equals yes into our uh, sentmin mod custom config file. And now when we do sentmin, we're going to do option four to upgrade nginx. Do we want to do yum checks? Yes. If you already just did them, you don't have to. Now that that's taken care of, we can finally upgrade. Which version do we want? The latest version is 1.17.9. Yes. Each time a new version of Nginx or PHP FPM is released, George will release a post on the Sentiment Mod forums telling you what's changed. So it's a good idea to periodically check those. So what we enabled was the Nginx zero downtime mode, which basically it'll update it and it'll, you'll have two copies of the old version and the new version of Nginx and basically just swaps it over to the new one rapidly. So if there's any downtime at all, it would be like a second. If you don't do this, your site will go down for maybe 30 seconds. So it's a bit of an improvement. Now that that's complete. We'll just make sure our site still works. Yes, it does. Perfect. If you don't want to check those yum updates every time, just do control C. Get out of there. So now I'll show you how to recompile PHP FPM. And we're also going to enable PHP profile guided optimizations, which will make your server a bit faster. It'll basically tune the settings for you based on how many CPUs you have and how much memory you have. So to do that, we just run this command and we just cat that out just to make sure it worked correctly. Looks good. Now run sentiment again. Select option five. No, we just checked. We like to upgrade. Yes. To find out the latest versions, you can search for PHP versions and that'll give you this list. We're on the latest version of 7.3, which is 7.3.15. I will warn you, a lot of plugins for Zen 402 do not, are not compatible with 7.4 yet. So that's why I've stayed on 7.3. But for this tutorial, let's upgrade to 7.4.3. We do want to use Zen Opcache, yes. Do we need legacy extensions? No. If you're using some really old software on your site, you might need to, but nothing recent requires it that I know of. Now, what you'll see here is PGP's baby. It's all compiled and set up, and now it's doing the guided optimizations. It's running all these tests to see how fast these things execute. Now that's complete. Let's just make sure our website works. It works fine, still great. So you should see like a 15 to 20 percent, maybe percent increase in performance. And you can look up this guide, how to boost sent mid mod lump stack performance for other tips on making your website really fast. And this is part of, part of the reason why sent mid mod is awesome makes everything really easy to manage. You're in control of everything. It's got PGO and a bunch of other stuff in Ava 2000 or George the guy who develops it, he puts a lot of work in and a lot of testing to make this as fast as possible. And that's why it's used by all the top Zen Foral sites. Now I'm going to show you how to set up a interesting way to do redirects. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new file and it's going to be called redirects.conf. And let's open this. And in here, we're going to put a map dollar sign request underscore URI dollar sign request uh, redirect underscore URI and then in here you can just map your redirects very simply so for this in this case we're just going to do uh, 403.html and we're going to redirect it to 404.html and it was semicolon save it and then in our main vhost config file we're going to add an include here it's going to be uh, include slash user slash local slash nginx slash conf slash conf dot d slash redirects dot conf and then we're going to find our location block header. So this is our main block. And in here, we're going to do, we're going to do if dollar sign redirect URI, open and close. And we're going to do return 301 dollar sign redirect underscore URI. So now any redirects we put in that file will be tested. If uh, the redirect URI exists, then it's going to perform the redirect for you. Now let's do ngx restart and let's see if that worked. Back over here and do uh, slash 403.html. And it redirected us to 404, so it works. 
So you can add, you know, hundreds of these in there. You could just put them all on new lines, make sure you end it with a semicolon, and that will redirect all those for you. Next, I want to show you how to do Nginx rate limiting, which I just implemented on my site. We're going to do a limit request zone a binary remote address zone equals public colon 10m rate equals 1 r per m so this is just gonna be a test case and then we're gonna have a real one that we're actually gonna use so the first one i'll just read that you're just defining a request zone right and it's sorting by the remote address and the zone's name is public 10m means the size of the of what they're going to track how many requests per minute or per second per ip address how much memory are we going to allocate for that list so we're going to allocate 10 megabytes which is about 160,000 ip addresses should be plenty and then rate one r per minute that's one request per minute you can also do s so that would be per second but our real one that we're going to use is going to be 200 r per minute sorry this one's going to be public this one's going to be test now we're going to scroll down into our main location block here and we're going to put limit quest zone equals public actually we're just going to leave it as test we're going to change it to public later so now we can save that so all that's doing is what request zone are we using we're using the test zone that we defined up here for that block now we can do ngx restart we should do one request and then we should get blocked right so i'm just going to refresh we get it request again and we're getting see we have a problem now right we're being rate limited so we did over one request per minute and so we got rate limited depending how your site's set up you'll get a different error but let's go back to our file here because that is just gonna that's gonna cause way too many problems so what we need to use is we need to use the public okay so we can change this to public right here but there's still an issue with that, right? So our public is set to 200 requests per minute, which may not be enough. What if a user is opening a lot of new tabs of your website all really fast that he would get rate limited? So you wanna avoid doing this. So this is something you have to test your numbers and, and see how it goes. But there's a way to avoid people getting rate limited who are just doing a burst of browsing really fast. And that's by using the burst setting. So if we go back here, we're going to add some new things to this clause here. Uh, zone is going to be public. Burst is going to be 400, which is double what our normal rate limit is. And then we're going to set no delay. If we didn't put no delay, it would always give a delay in between the requests. But in this case, when we have burst set and no delay set, a person can request really fast and it will be served as right away. Basically kind of like bypassing our rate limit. But let's say the server is really busy and there are hundreds of people doing lots of burst requests, then they are going to be rate limited. In the event of a DDoS attack, this will slow it down tremendously, but will, it will have limited impact on regular users. If you want to learn more about these settings, go to nginx.com uh, slash blog slash rate limiting nginx, and this will teach you everything how it works. That's where I learned how to do it. So now let's save this nginx restart again. And now we should be able to access our site without problem. Yep, we're good. Next thing I want to show you is connecting uh, via FileZilla in a different manner. We saw in the last video, I showed you how to set this up with FTP. But what if you need access to a bunch of files, or maybe it's just easier to manage it in FileZilla, but the files you want are outside of the public domain folder. In that case, you can switch over to SFTP with just SSH file transfer protocol. And we're going to change logon type to key file. So the user we're going to be using is root. We've got our key file selected, and we're going to browse for our key. Select all files for the format that I exported. And we're going to select CMM2, which is our private key. Open. It's not in the right format, so we have to convert it. Put in the password for your, your passphrase for your key. It's going to convert it and now we're going to save a new version a ppk version and then we should be able to connect good now we're connected and we're connected as root and so we have complete full access to everything so we can go into nginx and domains and now we can get our public folder if we want to now it's going to be really easy to get in and grab anything we need using the graphical user interface you can also just set up a new ftp user and give them access to the to your whole server but I actually just find this easier. Next, I want to show you about your mail. Every time you log in, it'll tell you you have new mail. So you can cat slash var slash spool slash mail slash root. And that's going to give us all of our mail. 
and it's not in a very nice format. So we are going to do yum install uh, mutt. So to read your mail in a nicer format, you just type mutt. Do you want to create a new one? No. And now you can list, these are all those emails that are in that log. Um, so we can see every time I logged in, LFD shoots off a little email. Um, we have high resource usage. We have cron jobs are logged in here. You can see LFD blocked some people, distributed SSHD attack on account. That's just brute forcing, etc. And so if you want to delete any of these, you can just do uh, semicolon D or D, I should say. Uh, and so you can mark these for deletion, right? They're no longer important. And then we can do quit. It'll say purge the five deleted messages. Yes, we do. And now we're out. Alternatively, if you just want to get rid of everything because it's just old junk, you can do cat slash dev null and then put it into slash var slash spool slash mail slash root. And now that file will be empty. You can also set it up to forward to like your Gmail address or something, but I don't like to use my server for any sort of email. Last thing we're going to do is let's go to uh, slash home create a new file. Now I'm going to show you how to just make a really quick backup script for doing manual backups. So we're in our home directory. We're going to create a new empty file. It's just going to be backup.sh. We are going to give that execute permissions. Yes. Let's open it with default editor. We're going to do pa uh, a shebang, right? Bin slash bash. And I'm actually just going to paste these in. You'll find these in the link in the description below. You will find these on my website. Um, it's just three backup things. Tar is just going to make archives of all these files, right? We're going to put it in the test server best slash backup folder. And then I have three different ways I backup stuff. So these are, just, these are just my manual full backups that I do. Let me increase this so it's easier to see. So this string here, this just tells it to put in the date. And then what we're going to backup are these three folders, test server dot best slash public. We're going to do user slash local nginx slash html. That's our main default uh, vhost that we set up. And then our nginx config files, because I find the thing I screw up the most is in that folder. So now we can save those, upload it, and now we should be able to run it. And it doesn't because text file is busy. I think we just have to close SSH and reopen it. So we'll just cd to home and then run it again. Let's do, we need to go to slash home slash yeah, slash home, and we just need to edit this in the default editor. We need to change our line endings to Unix line formatting, okay? And then save it again, and now, God willing, it will work. Oh, it doesn't because we don't have the right folders. Gotcha. Okay, so we need to go to slash home, slash nginx, slash domains, test server.best, backup, new folder, full underscore backups. Now, it should actually work. We go there now three files. Our config files, our default vhost backup, and then our actual site's backup. I just like to, anytime I do anything big to the site, I like to just back everything up manually. I don't trust automated backups. I have automated MySQL backups, and then I have something else that does diff backups, right? It, it only backs up the stuff that it hasn't backed up before, and it's too annoying to just grab one file out of those backups. So anyways, that's my little backup file. I think I've showed you everything I wanted to do in this video. In the next video, we're going to install Zenforo. We're going to install PHP my admin. I'm going to sell, show you memcached, zend, opcache, um, and some other things. So look forward to that. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate, patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos and peace out.